Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first world tour of season two of Python Plays Minecraft. And guys, I'm excited, we're on episode 125 as a whole and oh man, have we done a lot of stuff since episode 101 when we started season two. So yeah, I'm excited to show you guys what's been going on. If you guys have never watched this series before, this is essentially just a normal vanilla Let's Play survival series. And well, I encourage you guys to go ahead and check out the series playlist. There's gonna be a link on screen for you guys right about now so you guys can check out what's been going on. But uh, yeah, we're on season two. We're on the first world tour of season two. And guys, there is a map download from the point of the beginning of this episode. So go ahead and check out the description down below. There's going to be links for you guys there. And any questions you may have will almost certainly be answered in the description. So I'm excited, guys. I really, really am. If you guys are excited for this world tour and for more episodes of Python Plays Minecraft to come, then do be sure to drop a like rating, my friends. That would be absolutely fantastic. So, without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get straight on into this thing. Starting off with the episode 101 house, or episode 1 house of season 2. Here it is, Python's humble home. The first build in our major build project here called Flora City. Now, some of you older subscribers may know where that reference comes from, but for those of you guys unaware, uh, in the old days of this channel, well, I say old days, it was only a couple of years ago when it actually comes down to it, but I used to have a long-lasting Let's Play series called Python's World, and the first thing I ever built on there was a settlement called Flora Valley, and Flora City is basically a spiritual successor to that settlement. So yeah, here we are. We've got my home. It's looking great. We've got Pipsqueak here. We've got Squawkers over here. Oh, that's interesting. The buried treasure map appears to... Oh. That's interesting. Ah. Huh. Okay, so for whatever reason, the item frame sort of cuts off his name. Um, that's interesting, but oh well. Got a little micro storage area here. We did this map, actually, in the episode before last, I think it was. But yeah, we've got an actual map of Flora City, and I'm very, very happy that this entire settlement fitted on one fully zoomed in map. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? I mean, look at it, man. It looks pretty great, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it a lot. But yeah, we pop out here, there's just a tidy little crop farm, and well, for an episode one house, there's quite a lot going on. We've got our first full adventure map going on here, ladies and gentlemen, so I decided, you know what? One thing we're going to do this season is do adventure maps, and we're going to start marking down all of the various points of interest, okay? So... Pink means that we have ourselves a base area. I mean, Flora City. I mean, it is pink on the map. You can't see it because my pointer is in the way. We've got red, which is generated structures. And we have purple, which is just places of interest. You know, nice terrain, uh, biomes that I like to have nearby. All that kind of stuff. It's really, really cool. I think it is something that you guys should absolutely do in your own survival world. You know, just take a little bit of a supply of wool and wood and dyes with you. And just start naming things as you go along. And then you'll always know where things are. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So, shortly after the episode one house, we decided to go ahead and make this multi-tiered farm, which, well, as you can see, it's got multiple tiers still. We can pop up here. There's another little, another little farm area. And right up the top there, ladies and gentlemen, is Wolverine. His name is Wolverine. Like, you can, I mean, you can just about see it through the water there. Yep, it's basically a mountain water sheep hybrid. And Wolverine was a name that you guys came up with, actually. And I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> so that's what we went with, guys. So, moving on. I think what we'll do is we'll start off with basically this basin area first. And then maybe we'll check out the builds up top there uh, shortly after. But yeah, we pop up the other side. And we've actually got ourselves a little bit of a horse pen. We got this dude here with his majestic diamond bling-blang armor of epicness. Uh, basically, we just get on the horse. We open these things manually. And then behind us, the gates will automatically shut, which is pretty darn cool. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's continue round, shall we? We have ourselves a house here. I mean, there was a butcher who roamed around here, but I've got absolutely no idea where he's even gone now. He might not even be alive anymore. Um... I don't know. But anyways, the intention of this place was for it to be a fishing hut. I mean, we, uh, you know, start popping through these. We've got ourselves a nice fishing rod there. We've got some various drops, you know, junk 
treasure here. Very, very nice. And yeah, this is what made the villager into butchers. You know, that's that's that. Smokers. <laughs> so yeah, moving on, guys. We have ourselves a beautiful little enchant room right here. I mean, it's a pretty standard design for little old me. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just nice. We've got ourselves a bunch of decoration. We've got ourselves a whole bunch of, you know, just... I don't know, decorative things. We've got a grindstone so we can disenchant. We've got ourselves this for decoration. We've got ourselves a gear chest, a lapis chest. It's pretty simple, isn't it? But it works really, really well. So, moving around, this is probably my favorite build out of this entire area. It's very simply a library, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you can see, we've got pretty much... We've got bookshelves everywhere. We've got barrels all over the place which have, like, various different books in them. So, in this one, for example, we would have efficiency books. Uh, unbreaking books would go in there. Uh, what else have we got going on? We've got protection books. Oh, there's actually one in there. Very nice. And then we've got, like, other things as well for bookshelves themselves. And basically, the idea was for us to get ourselves four librarian villagers... We with really, really nice enchants. So, for example, this guy is called the Protector because he sells super cheap protection for books, as well as looting three for a higher price and then also mending, believe it or not. So, we've got the Super Sharp guy over here, as you can see, selling Sharpness 5 for 8 emeralds, which I don't think is too bad at all. And then, what's this guy? The Mighty Unbreakable, Unbreaking 3. Pretty standard, right? Also got Respiration 3 for a slightly higher price. And then moving on here, we've got ourselves Efficiency 5 for 1 Emerald, which is fantastic. As well as Feather Falling 4. So when it actually comes down to it, the set of villages we've got going on here is really quite amazing, isn't it? We can get ourselves some really nice tools from those guys really, really easily. Uh, but anyways, moving on. We've got our attic room up here. We've got some various bits and bobs going on. We've got, like, emerald storage. We've got mending books. What have we got? Looting books. Okay, kind of cool. Fortune books. Nice. Silk touch books. And then, yeah, there's just a few bits and bobs all over the place. Helmet books. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? I like this. I can't wait to fill this up a little bit more as the series progresses. Because, you know, there's loads of different types of enchanted books in this game. And it'll just be nice to have them all nicely organized, you know. So, let's keep going, shall we? To the Smith area. Ah, oh, yeah. I don't even know if there's any villagers here anymore. Oh, uh, no. They've either all died or they've all escaped. And, well, probably died. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ah, it's not a good state of affairs, is it? You know, I'm trying to do a world tour of everything that's, you know, been done. And we've just come across a whole bunch of dead villagers or villagers that have escaped. It's, it doesn't say much for me, does it? <laughs> But yeah, Grindstone allows us to get ourselves a toolsmith villager. Uh, what else have we got? We got ourselves a smithy here. I'm pretty sure this allows us to have a weapon. No, hang on. No, the Grindstone is the weaponsmith. The smithy is the toolsmith. And then finally, the blast furnace is the armorer. So the three different types of smith villager, they would all be roaming around here and doing whatever they want. And obviously, when they're finished with their day, they would just wind up inside of here. But unfortunately... Unfortunately, they're all either missing or dead. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. All right. Well, let's keep going, shall we? This, ladies and gentlemen, is another one of my favorite builds for this area. So, we've got the library as one of my favorite builds. This is one of my other favorite builds. This is the headquarters, guys. So, for any of you guys unaware, in Season 2, we have ourselves a data pack called the More Mob Heads Data Pack. If you've ever watched Hermitcraft or the Legacy SMP server, you'll know that you have the ability to get heads from very, very, you know, weird and wonderful mobs. You can get from, you can get them from literally every single mob in the entire game. So we decided to go ahead and install it in this season, and we're starting to, you know, rustle up a bit of a collection here. Uh, what? See, <laughs> Endermen keep leaving blocks in here, man. You bunch of fools. But yeah, we go in here. Eventually, as the series progresses, we're hopefully going to get ourselves a whole bunch more mob heads. And we can put them on display here. And it's all going to look absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that's the headquarters, ladies and gents. Very, very nice. And then we move on over here. And we're starting to come across uh, the outskirts. And also a creeper hole that, for whatever reason, I decided I didn't want to repair. Um... Gotta be honest, I don't even remember that even happening. <laughs> but it 
did, apparently. But yeah, here we are. We've got Flora Bay here, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very nice. And somewhere along here is a stone generator. So we've got a haste 2 beacon going on. Uh, we plop ourselves up on the slab here. If we can, that is. And what do you know? We've got ourselves a stone slash cobblestone generator going on here. And because we have haste 2 and efficiency 5, it means we can insta mine all this stuff. And, well, as you guys can hopefully see, there's a bunch of stone going on, which is very, very nice. And, yeah, basically, I wanted this place to be water accessible. So, yeah, if we just go ahead and pop out the end here... What you guys are going to notice is that there is a tripwire hook. And we've got some fences here. The idea is we'll be able to take any boat, what, like literally any boat, we'll be able to go through here and then the boat will go through there. In fact, I kind of want to try it just to show you guys. Uh, oh, there is a boat. Okay, coolio. So, yeah, say for example, we want to go on an adventure. We just pop ourselves over here. Going out, we have to manually do this stuff, but then it shuts behind us, right? So let's say we're coming back from an adventure. Do, 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 do. I've got amazing stuff. Let's see if we could pop in here. And what do you know? Fully automatic trapdoor freaking boat system thing. It works really, really well. I rather like it, actually. But anyways, uh, that is just about it, I would say. Aside from maybe, you know, showing you guys a couple bits around here. I decided to adapt a naturally generated waterfall into a fountain structure. I thought that was a really nice idea as opposed to just, I don't know, messing it up in some other way, you know. And then finally, we do have ourselves a mine shaft down here. Going down to diamond level, of course. Uh, so yeah, eventually I do want to go ahead and overhaul this a little bit. Make it look a bit better. Uh, but as time goes on... We're just going to take all this stuff and, and do stuff with it, you know? We're going to go ahead and finish a whole bunch of stuff, alright? So, let's have ourselves a wee bit of food here. And let's carry on. We've got a lava fall here. This was naturally generated as well. I decided to make that into a bit of a feature. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because lava, smithing, it makes sense, does it not? So yeah, let's go up this central pyre here. Although it's not really central, is it? Let's just go up this pyre here. And this is where our nether portal is and then we can follow it up all the way to the top and we are at the top section of Flora City and basically we can do like an entire sort of lap around here just so I can show you guys uh, all of the builds going on here because oh man is there a lot of them to be honest you'll see one build and then you'll see all of the builds because they are all literally the same in that they've got the same block palette the same sort of decorations the only things that are really different are the shape of the builds and uh, you know the amount of stories they have the amount of floor so, for example, this one here, we can go up the stairs here, and what do you know? We got ourselves a little bit of a balcony. We can look upon our dominion here. I mean, it looks good, doesn't it? I love the views that we have from around top of Flora City. Like, we've got the extended flower forest over there with apparently a lava pool. Uh, we've got ourselves a big old swamp over there. We've got uh, some sort of floating island over there. We've got mountains. I really like that mountain scape mountain range whatever mountain view i think it looks really really nice and then of course we've got another mountain range just over here as well and there's just loads of stuff guys there really really is some of these builds even have attics to them so yep ah there's just so much stuff isn't there i like it we still have to go ahead and do the interiors of all of these builds i only very recently got all of these builds finished you know the actual infrastructure and exteriors themselves we got all of it done very very recently we didn't really have a chance to get the interiors done just yet but we'll be able to get them done very very soon so for example this one has three floors we can go out here and what do you know more epic views you love to see it. I love to see it anyway. <laughs> All right, so popping down and out. I do kind of want to show you guys some of the uh, some of the other builds going on here. We've got ourselves a, a few llama stables. There's three llama stables, each with two llamas in them because these llamas, we've had them pretty much since the start of this season. They have served me very, very well and I'm pretty sure, yep, some of them still have stuff in them. So ink sacks, we actually use them for trading more than anything. That was our way of getting emeralds real quick. Uh, and yeah, we've got some more builds going on here. How about it, huh? Wait, where's the staircase in this build? What? Dude, legit, I think I forgot to put a staircase in this build. How the hell did I manage to forget to do that? I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. But anyways, this is one of my more favorite builds up here. Though This build is like two builds 
which is connected via like a bridge. And you can walk under the bridge onto the main Flora City Bridge. And yeah, it's just great. Here's another one of the Llama Stables. Very cool. We've got Trevor back here. And Trevor basically contains all of our mapping stuffs, which I think is cool. Cartography table. There's the dyes. Obviously, we'd have a supply of wool in here, but we've just about run out of our supplies. So that's a thing. But uh, yeah, we've got a nice bridge going on here. I think it made sense, you know, to connect up the two sides. I just think it's nice, man. I really, really do. So let's just check out this building real quick. This was the first build we actually finished up here, but we didn't really do much with it. Again, no interior just yet. But we can go up here, up onto the second floor. And what do you know? We can get onto the top of this building here from here, which is great. I like it. I like it. So yeah, we've only got access to the bottom from this door, but then we can get up to the top from this door. So it's cool. I like it a lot. Oh, here we go. This is one of the builds I was on about. It's got three floors and then an attic. So, yeah, we've got a big old build going on here, guys. Look at it. So, this is the ground floor. We've got the first floor here. Uh, what? I didn't do that. Freaking Enderman, man. They keep dropping random dirt and grass blocks everywhere. Freaking jerks. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a good view. That is a good view, guys. I might actually use that for the thumbnail. That is such a cool view. That's like a proper little cityscape, isn't it? Dang, dude. That's got to be my favorite. Like, legit. I like it. All right. Well, let's go up to the third floor here. There is, in fact, another balcony here with an another amazing view. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. I do love it. So, and then if we wanted even more space, then what do you know? We've got ourselves an attic as well. So, yeah, this house has got lots of things that we could put inside it. There's lots of space to work with, and it's just great. I love it very much. But anyways, let's just continue on with the lap around here. We've got, like, a nice little nature area here. I was kind of thinking maybe I could put, like, a pond or something. Maybe some chairs. You know, make it into a full-on nature area. A tiny little park for our residents. Well, eventual residents, should I say. Uh, but yeah, anyways, continuing on. More houses. We're not going to look in all of the houses because, like I say, you see one of them, you see all of them. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, okay. Right, so the, clearly there's a drown somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, so, yeah. It's just great. I love this place. I really, really do. There is something to be said about, you know, things being a little bit boring and repetitive, doing things with the same block palette over and over. But if you want a nice, cohesive-looking settlement, you're going to want to use the same block palette over and over. So, yeah. And there's the third and final uh, llama stable. So, yeah, that's that. Oh, dude, look at how tall this building goes, man. I kind of want to go up to the top of one of these ones because I'm pretty darn sure... We should be able to see... Yep, look at over there. There's like an actual NPC village way over there. Which eventually is going to be the place we source the villagers for this place from. Because we haven't... I mean, aside from the bottom area, we don't have any villagers up at the top section. Like, at all. So we definitely need to do something with that. And I think that that area where that NPC village was, that's going to have to be the place that we do stuff with. Alright? So yeah. More houses. More epicness. More lovely decor. And yeah, like I say, for all of you sort of older subscribers out there, this will be hopefully a nice little nod back to Flora Valley for you guys. Now, obviously, I think it will be a nice idea to check this out from the sky. So here you go, my friends. We'll do a little bit of a lap around here so you guys can see what's going on. It it looks so good, guys. I love this area. I really do. It's such a nice area. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of the Season 2 area of the world, I mean, this is pretty much all we've done. So, what we're going to do is we're going to head into the Nether and back to the Season 1 area of the world where, believe it or not, we have still done a couple things here and there over the Season 1 area of the world. So, let's head into the Nether portal and let's see about getting back to the 0, zero coordinates, okay? So, here we are. Bring up the F3 screen and then we basically need to head in this direction. Thankfully, I, I know this route like the back of my freaking hand, all right? So we don't need to worry too much about navigation, he says, as he is bobbing and weaving all over the place. But here we go, my friends. This is one of the other projects I've been slowly but surely working on, is a nether tunnel project, okay? The idea, 
is very, very simple. We've got ourselves some blue ice on the go, and we've got it alternating with uh, blackstone slabs. And believe it or not, this is still enough to have us travel at an insane speed with a boat, okay? Now, it goes without saying, the intention is for this nether tunnel to be, you know, all over the place, okay? We want to have this nether tunnel designed for the entire tunnel. Like, I've already marked out where all of the, uh, all of the nether portals are supposed to go. So, for example, that one up there. It's supposed to be the one for the hub area, I do believe. Uh, but yeah, it's great. It's great. We are slowly but surely doing stuff in the nether. Uh, but, you know, we're just we're just taking it at a nice leisurely pace. All right. So, heading back to the season one area of the world, ladies and gentlemen. Here's our old 8K by 8K map. Once it loads up, there it is. Love to see it. We finally got ourselves a cartographer villager inside of our 0, zero mapping hut. Because, well, the coordinates here... Are pretty much zero zero. Like this, this uh, portal here is exactly zero zero. So yeah, that's why I called it the zero zero cartography mapping hut. So, anyways, moving back to the main base area, guys. I'll show you what we've been doing over here. I mean, to be honest, there's not too much. We've basically been amending farms and just creating things that make our quality of life a little bit easier, right? So, for example, we pop over here. This is one of the things we've done in Season 2 is our so-called fireworks factory, okay? So, we got a slightly more industrial-sized sugarcane farm back there sort of behind this wood. And then we have actually linked up our gunpowder supply to our hyper farms, you know, our hyper mob farms. And uh, yeah, we basically just have an item filter down at the bottom where the hyper farm is, which siphons out all the gunpowder and spurts it out of here instead. So basically, we could just make fireworks on the go. And it's just nice. It's as simple as that. It's just freaking nice. I'll tell you what, just so we can actually show you guys what's going on, we'll go into spectator mode real quick. So yeah, like I say, we pop back here. There's a whole bunch of fully automatic sugarcane farms, as you guys can see. And then underneath, there was a minecart going back and forth. And then, when it gets to the end, it sort of spurts it into a hopper. And then the hopper chain goes all the way over into this chest. And same with this side as well. Uh, both sides have 32 sugarcane. And we have to be pretty careful with this farm, actually, because it wound up actually bumping into our episode two or episode three zombie farm from the extreme very beginning of the series and i didn't really want to get rid of this thing because it's like a piece of history you know i ain't about to get rid of stuff like that okay so in terms of this gunpowder though we'll go ahead and quickly show you guys so we go down the bottom here way down the bottom here in fact and yeah we've got just so much stuff going on so going into the farming room here guys yeah this is pretty much the only thing we've changed uh, so this side has actually been disabled. This would be the place where people drop down to a one shot and then we could kill them with a sword to get XP. However, we don't really need this anymore because we have a much better source of XP here with the villages. All right. So what I decided to do instead in terms of this hyper farm, which by the way, this is what it's looking like. Yep. This is our hyper farm guys. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? And then you look around the place like you can see just how much time I've put into going ahead and lighting up the surrounding area. And as a result, this really is a hyper farm. This thing just spawns mobs like nobody's business. It is crazy. But whatever the case is, they will drop down this side. The only people who will ever survive this drop are people with armor. And everybody else will pretty much just die. And then we've got ourselves a little lever here. So when the lever is pushed back... We start to get drops in the chest like that. And when the lever is pulled, the items get burned inside of a lava source. So we don't wind up getting absolutely overrun with resources. However, all the while, while that's happening, there is an item filter, okay? So the gunpowder is always siphoned out and it is put inside of this dropper here and dispensed up the item streams and whatnot. So yeah, it's good. It's good. I really, really like this. So for those of you guys interested, if you really want to know, the amount of resources we actually have going on here is kind of insane. Okay, so let's just pop over here. We've got loads of gunpowder here as well. Gun, uh, rotten flesh, pretty much full. We've got loads of arrows. We've got loads of bones. We don't have to worry about it, okay? I am honestly to the point in this world where I'm starting to just throw away excess resources because, I don't know, things just get kind of crazy. <laughs> 
But yeah, anyways guys, believe it or not, that is just about it for what we have done since episode 101 in the season 2 areas of the world, and also a little bit in this area of the world, right? So... Yeah, I mean, going forward, now that we've basically finished Flora City, we're going to start getting back to a whole bunch of our OG projects from Season 1. You know, Blackstone Manor here is definitely something I want to start working on again. We're going to need to set up some sort of industrial-sized bartering farm to get a bunch of Blackstone, because that is probably going to be one of the best ways we get Blackstone in this series. Because, yeah, you can get them from bartering now, and it's great. I like it very much. So, anyways, guys, that will just about wrap it up for today's little mini world tour episode. As I've mentioned before, every 25 episodes, so 25, 50, and 75, will only be mini world tours showcasing the stuffs we've done since the last world tour. However, every 100 episodes, so episode 100, episode 200, those will be the complete world tours, where the video length is probably going to go well into the hour mark or whatever. I don't know, man. It just gets crazy after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> So yeah, guys, I'm very, very excited to be, uh, you know, back in the season one area of the world and starting to work on this stuff again. So let's do the comment of the day, of course, and yeah, we'll end off today's episode. So PE Gamer Afan says Python has played many seasons, but that hello everybody tune has never changed. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's honestly never changed. I mean, the, sometimes I go through phases where I try out different intros, but at the end of the day, I always just wind up gravitating back to the hello everybody that day and it's kind of funny as well like uh, if i had a penny for every time i've had that intro compared to stampy's i would be one rich guy i wouldn't need to do youtube anymore i would never need to work a day again in my entire life i would be so rich and it's kind of funny when i think about it because i am absolutely convinced that i have had that intro longer than stampy has had his Okay, just because someone's got a lot more subs and, a, and is a lot more popular, it doesn't mean that they were the first to come up with things, okay? I am pretty darn sure I have had the hello everyone intro longer than most people have, okay? So yeah, and it's the same with my Python skin as well. The amount of people who compare my skin to Preston, again, I am absolutely convinced I've had this skin longer. So yeah, just because someone's got more subs doesn't mean that they made something theirs. You know, maybe they got inspiration from someone else. You ever thought about that? Uh, <laughs> uh, I kid though, my friends. I kid. So that is going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's little mini world tour episode and you're excited for more episodes to come, do be sure, of course, to drop a like rating. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell so you guys don't miss out on my future Minecraft videos. And yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Go ahead, check out this world for yourself in the description down below with the world download. But for now, guys, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.